Welcome friends to this session on properties of a parallelogram and uh, we will be discussing in subsequent few sessions a lot of theorems related to parallelograms and quadrilateral in general. So it's always advisable to make a list of all these theorems and keep it handy whenever you are solving problems on quadrilaterals. This way you don't need to mug up any particular theorem and by repetition of the uses of all these theorems it will be by hearted automatically. So let's begin. So in this session, we are going to discuss theorem one, the first theorem, which is, which says a diagonal of a parallelogram divides it into two congruent triangles. So the strategy which we will be adopting here is we will be also revising the properties of parallelograms. That is, we will be reinstating all those properties and then see how best we can use those properties. Okay. So a diagonal of a parallelogram of a parallelogram so you know what a diagonal is so a line segment joining the opposite vertices of a quadrilateral is called a diagonal so in this case you can see clearly bd is a diagonal now abcd is a parallelogram so let's start our proof so we are saying abcd is a parallelogram is a parallelo gram right so what does a parallelogram mean what are the properties so that means and uh, a, that means ab is equal to dc as well as parallel to dc okay similarly ad is parallel to bc so this is ab parallel to bc and ab is equal to or sorry ad is equal to bc right Okay, so we have to prove that triangle ADB is congruent to triangle CBD. Let's do it methodically. So given is ABCD is a parallelogram and we have to prove to prove diagonal diagonal BD divides divides the two sorry divides the parallelogram divides the parallelogram 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 into two congruent triangles congruent triangles this is what is to be proved okay so let's start the proof let's begin so it's given that abcd is a parallelogram that for therefore we can write ab is parallel to cd or DC, whichever AB is parallel to CD because ABCD is a is a parallelogram. Correct. So this is the first step we know. So AB is parallel to CD. Hence, hence, and al also you can write also AD is parallel to BC. Same same reason. Therefore, we can write angle. A B D is equal to angle A D B. Sorry, angle A B D, not D B. Yeah, angle A D B A B D. That means this angle is equal to this angle. Angle B D C. Why? Alternate interior angles. And why do we require all this? You'll sooner see. So we have to prove that um, ADB is congruent to CBD. So before that, let's first meet all the requirements. So hence, ADC is also, if you see ADC, sorry, ADB, not C, ADB is equal to angle CBD. Isn't it? Let me mark it as well. So this is ADB. And this is equal to C D C B D. Okay, again, same reason. What? Alternate interior angles. I'm writing in shorthand. Now let we have to prove that these the diagonal is dividing the quadrilateral into two congruent triangles. So let's see. So we'll say in triangle A B D and triangle C d b please be very very mindful of the congruence part what do i mean so if you see if you have to prove that they are equal you have to have corresponding sides equal as well so if you see here 
I am writing A corresponding to C. That means A must be equal to C. Angle A must be equal to C. Similarly, angle B must be equal to D, which is likely to be proved later. And D should be equal to B, right? Angle, that means uh, the vertices and the angle correspondence must be there. So let's see. Now, in triangle A, B, D and C, D, B, if you see, angle A, B, D is equal to angle B, D, C. Proved above. Proved above. Here, in say 1, let's say this is 2. A, B, D is equal to B, D, C. Also, D, B is equal to D, B. Common side common side and angle ADB will be equal to angle CBD again proved above in 2 if you look at 2 equation number 2 we just proved it okay so now I'm writing it here so what is it that means triangle ABD is congruent to triangle C D B okay there is a chance that you might make an error here so please be very very careful in terms of what all correspondence you are making so for example if you see what do I mean by this I mean that if this is angle A B D or here look at this point A B right angle A B D must be equal to angle c d b so is is that so a b d is equal to a b d is equal to c d b yes we just proved this so that is correspondence now in the triangle a b d the vertex or the angle at d so if you see in triangle a b d angle at d let me use this highlighter so this is the angle i'm trying angle i'm talking about now this angle must be equal to angle B in C D B so this angle yep so corresponding correspondence is achieved yep. similar and then angle A must be equal to angle C which is true and if you see side D B where is side D B if you side C this is B D here and D B here so both are equal actually so if you see B D side is equal to D B side so hence all correspondence of parts are uh, there so hence you have to have very very clear understanding about it so let's say you what would be the mistake like uh, mistakes would be like triangle a b d many times people write triangle c b d now this is a wrong statement to make wrong wrong why because angle A is angle equal to C, but angle B is not equal to angle B in the corresponding um, triangles. For example, we are talking about this triangle. So if this triangle, angle B is something like this. And, and in this triangle, angle B is something like that. Now, this angle here is not equal to this angle here, correct? So, hence, correspondence is lost. Actually, this angle here is equal to this angle here. So, hence, B, in whatever position you are writing B, in the second triangle, D should be in the same position. So, for example, here, in the first triangle, B is in the second position. And so, hence, D should also be in the second position here. So, that's what I mean when I say correspondence, right? So, this is how you have to solve it so hence this was wrong so you just eliminate it this is wrong so hence the true result is this and hence proved hence proved so you have to have very clear understanding of what is correspondence and how to use the properties of parallelogram to prove this first theorem and as i suggested please mention all or please maintain a list of all theorems at one place and use it to your advantage